Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Before we even get going, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, push all those little buttons down there so you get notified when I do a new video. Today I want to talk to you about E85 and how much your supercharged motor is going to love it. In this video, we're going to compare E85 fuel to 91 octane on three different performance applications. The first one is a supercharged 4.8 liter LS equipped with the M122 Cadillac supercharger. The next combination is a power adder 383 small block Chevy stroker equipped with a carbureted 671 supercharger and then again the same motor with an intercooled pro charger. So the question is this, how much is E85 really worth? To illustrate the gains offered by E85 on our first supercharger application, we ran a 4.8 liter LS with the M122 Cadillac blower using adapters. So this was a this blower was obviously designed for a Cadillac motor. It was using the adapters we were able to, uh, from Mac Daddy Parts, we were able to adapt the blower onto the LS and it worked very well. But the first thing we did was run it with a, what we would call a pump gas tune. So at 18 degrees of timing, and we were running 11 and a half, 11.7 pounds of boost on the Cadillac motor. And the 4.8 liter was equipped with, basically it had stock heads, it did have a, a JFR camshaft in it, a mild JFR camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. You guys can take a look. It's pretty small, 224, 228 kind of thing. We ran it with long tube headers, a Holly HP management system. And um, th this was a, uh, the 4.8 had a set of forged JE pistons, although you could obviously duplicate this with a, a junkyard motor easily and it did have extra ring gap in it so it, this thing worked well but run with the blower it made 518 horsepower as i said at a peak of 11.7 pounds and torque was up very well at 523 foot pounds and here's what happened when we switched over from pump gas to our e85 again we made no changes in timing So just adding the E85 picked up power everywhere. It picked up peak power was 542 horsepower. Uh, peak torque was 547 foot pounds of torque. And you can see, you know, in some places we picked up as much as 35 or 40 foot pounds of torque. So it was a big gain. And one thing we did on this one, because we were still running the, a fairly mild pump gas state of tune, pump gas timing levels, we then added more timing to this thing. So we added two degrees of timing. And you could see peak power jumped up to 555 horsepower and 561 foot-pounds of torque. Then we added another three degrees to get up to about 23 degrees total. And that's where we made the most power that we did. It made 590 horsepower and 592 foot-pounds of torque, but it was very responsive to the additional timing, and apparently we got this thing into the sweet spot where the E85 was working very well. Now, you could obviously, if you had a little bit more octane with the 91, and maybe the 91 octane would tolerate more than 18 degrees of timing. I don't know where that detonation threshold is. We had a, a, the air-to-water intercooler on there. We were running cold water through it, and the motor was being run fairly cold as well, too, not like it is out on the street, not at 200 degrees. So I think we probably could have got away with more than that on pump gas timing, but I just wanted to show you what the gains were just going from the pump gas up to E85 on the supercharge combination, and then to show you, look, you can go well beyond that with additional timing. So now let's take a, take a look and see what happened when we ran uh, the E85 versus pump gas test on a carbureted small block with a 671 blower and then again with a pro charger. This supercharged small block Chevy is a perfect example of what happens when we add 85 and the benefits we get from this type of fuel, even with no other changes. Uh, it's impressive and in this particular example, we're using a 671 supercharger with no intercooler, although in truth, the carburetors mounted on top of the supercharger do add charge cooling because you're drawing fuel through the blower and that definitely helps. And as we see, running E85 in place of regular gasoline has a big effect on power. And this is an example where since we don't typically have or traditionally have the intercooler underneath the blower, 
we're relying on the fuel to do the cooling and the extra charge cooling offered by the E85 over regular gasoline really shows well here. And it, we got some pretty big power gains on the supercharged application. So this was a 383 small block Chevy. It was a power adder 383 from the guys over at Blueprint Engines. It had their, their ass cast heads on it. We, it, for this test, it had a healthy cam in it. It was a, it was a 536, 555 lift, 224, 236 degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We ran this thing NA as I like to do before we ran any of the boost. We ran with metal Brock Victor Jr. intake, a 750 Holley carburetor. It had an MSD distributor. This particular motor, as I said, was the blueprint um, power adder motor, so it was low compression. It was 9 to 1. So run in naturally aspirated trim, our small block Chevy produced 453 horsepower and 457 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we added a 671 supercharger. Run at a peak of 11.4 pounds. Now we could have, this the power curve was still climbing on these short runner boosted applications. The, the intake manifold that they use on these 671s is a very, very short runner. So you'll, you'll oftentimes have a climbing, like a rising power curve because of the short runner deal. We had our peak boost at the peak RPM. This combination produced 642 horsepower and 589 foot-pounds of torque. And it's important to note that we mixed pump gas and race gas so that we could put enough timing in this thing to know that it was going to perform the way that we want it to. So that in this case, we had 30 degrees of total timing in this thing, which worked pretty well. And this thing wanted uh, 36 or 37 degrees when this motor was NA. So this thing also made 589 foot-pounds of torque, and this was a combination of 191 octane. Now here's what happened when we installed, when we ran E85. Now we didn't do anything to the carburetors other than jet them up. We put, we ended up putting 99 square jets in these carburetors to get them to flow enough fuel to compensate for the added flow that's required when you run E85 compared to the standard gasoline. In this case, it was a race gas, pump gas mix. But we wanted to have on the gas scale basically the same air fuel ratio with the E85. But because E85, we required a lot more fuel in order to get that average scale difference. So here's what happened when we put the E85 in it big change in power. Now we revved at 200 RPM higher, but even measured at the same point, we're looking at gains of 50 horsepower. This thing ended up producing, and the, the reason that we revved at 200 more RPM is because we wanted to top the 700 horsepower mark, which we did 700.3 and 646 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see through basically everywhere, through the whole curve, we picked up, you know, 595, 548. So we picked up more than 50 horsepower and more than 50 foot pounds of torque just from the E85. We didn't make any change to the timing. It was still running 30 degrees of total timing. This is all from the benefits offered by E85 through charge cooling and stuff. And these work really well. As I said, this is a, this is a great example of why you want to run E85 and an example of where you want to add E85 to. On a intercooled, you know, super uh, efficient uh, supercharger application or a turbo application, you might not get the same kinds of gains. But on this big 671 blower, you definitely got gains from the E85. As a follow-up test on the 383 small block Chevy, we first ran it with a 671, and then we ran it with a Pro Charger F1A94, and then we ran it uh, with the pump gas race gas mix like we did with the 671, and then we also ran it with E85. The interesting thing is the difference, the gains offered by the E85 were less on this particular application. I'm going to try to show you why here. So run with our pump gas race gas mix, the F1A94 was making right at 16 pounds of boost. And on this combination, that produced 786 horsepower and 667 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we replaced the pump gas race gas mix with E85. We did pick up power, and up at the top, it was a, you know, it's a fairly significant amount. We went from 784 to uh, 815 horsepower. So it picked up, you know, we're looking at about 
30 horsepower or, or so, which is a good gain, but not quite the gains that we saw in the 671. And I think that the reason for this is obviously the E85 is still working and doing well and making more power. Now, we didn't change the timing at all on this yet. So we did get gains from the E85, but the two things that this combination had that the 671 did not, one, it had a more efficient supercharger, even though we were running more boost than 11 and a half pounds on the 671, the Pro Charger is more efficient than the 671. So the discharge temperature, relatively speaking, is going to be lower. But what really helped this thing out is that we ran an air to water intercooler on the Pro Charger. So we all already had a fairly cool charge temperature going into the motor. So the E85 didn't bring that down as much as it probably did on the 671. So we did get gains, you know, like I said, 30 horsepower on this Pro Charge 383, but the gains are not quite as good as they were on the 671. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this comparison between E85 and 91 octane? As we learned, there's really no comparison. E85 is so much better. It offers not only a lot more power all by itself before you make any changes, but it also allows you to make even more changes for even more power. That's why I always use E85 when we're running stuff on the dyno. Whether it's a supercharged motor, or turbocharged motor, any kind of boosted motor, I run right over to the gas station, fill up three or four jugs full the E85 comeback and that's what we run in it. That's why we do it because it's so awesome. Armature Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff and I'll keep testing.